Oh yeah, it's time. Hey, it's Snake, and today I am very excited to present to you the Reaper set from Covert Instruments. This was in the vault for a while. It was actually called Project Slinger originally, um, sort of as a teaser name before um, it became known as the Reaper set. And this is designed by Mr. Trevor McNally, official McNally himself. You know, the guy who opens a master lock with a master lock or uses the stabby stab technique with a rake to open a lock in two seconds. His videos are very entertaining and they get people talking about lock picking and physical security and lock sport. So I don't give a fuck what anyone says. He's putting more eyes on the hobby and that's only a good thing. But anyway, my grievances with the mall ninja allegations aside, this is a lockpick set of his design. It literally says on Covert Instruments website that he had the biggest hand in designing all of the tools included in the set. So, um, I think without further ado, I can't really go through the contents of this without actually cracking it open, so why don't we do that? Okay, that opened up a little easily. There we go. So, it comes in this uh, stealth gray tradecraft case which is actually the color that the arbiter set used to be i don't think the camera does it justice but the arbiter set currently comes in the od green tradecraft case but when the arbiter first came out it was in this stealth gray tradecraft case instead so it is honestly pretty nice um that they're bringing this color back and that just means we have another color of uh tradecraft case to distinguish all of the sets so that we can tell them apart and it comes with this very nice patch too um i think this is yeah this is the first set from covert instruments that actually comes with a patch rather than uh being sold separately if my webcam will focus you can take a look it says mcnally at the top lock reaper at the bottom and it has this really cool skull. I imagine this is what Master Lock sees every time McNally uploads a new video. And it's got these two hooks on the side, which are, um, oh, if you look closely enough at them, these two hooks on either side of the patch are actually the new McTickler profile as well. So these profiles that we're seeing in the set are new to Covert Instruments. I don't think they're really new to lock picks in general, just because lock sport has existed for a long time. There are a lot of tried and true profiles that everyone knows works. Here in the uh, FNG set, this short hook and quint rake are quite standard and um, you know, you can pick a wide variety of locks with them. I've actually used this short hook alone to pick my way all the way to an LPU purple belt. Oh no wait, that's a lie. I actually need a medium hook to pick the blue belt lock, but I can pick purple belt locks with just this regular short hook. So it's a very standard profile, very tried and tested, and it works very well in a lot of situations. So while I don't necessarily claim that, you know, McNally designed these profiles originally, and you know, they're brand new to the market. They look very familiar to even some profiles that we've seen in the Genesis and Echelon sets, but there is one profile that sticks out to me here that I think I will be spending most of my video focusing on and seeing what I can do with it, which I also touched upon in my Riz Pick video last week. But anyway, I've been keeping you guys in suspense. Let's just get this case open. There we go. We've got uh, the five picks in here in 20 thou, they are looking very nice. These are uh, what they call their adaptive two-in-one turners. They are kind of bottom of keyway turners for the most part, but uh, we'll get to that. And then these are the new pry bars that come with this set. So I'm just gonna get these out of the packaging and organize them. Okay, so I've taken the other sets away because um, we're not ready to compare them just yet, but here is the Reaper set out of the packaging, and it is looking quite snazzy. And these profiles are numbered one through five. So number one is this shallow hook. It's actually extremely shallow. It has a very gentle slope. Um, I don't know if you can tell. Let me get the gentle reach out of my Echelon set to compare them, hold on. Okay, so this is the gentle reach from the Echelon set. And as you can see, 
the Echelon's Gentle Reach actually lifts a little bit higher than the Shallow Hook from the Reaper set, which is really interesting. And the Gentle Reach is actually a little more comparable to Profile Number 2 in terms of how high it goes up from the shaft at the tip. Profile Number 3 appears to be just um, the same short hook that we've seen in our you know, typical Genesis and Echelon. Profile number four looks like a medium hook, but with a flat tip instead of a rounded one, which I actually quite like because the issue I've always taken with the standard Genesis and Echelon medium hooks is the fact that the rounded tip sometimes makes it feel kind of easy to slip off when pressing the tip against the key pin. So the fact that this medium hook has a flat tip on it, it's gonna feel a lot more familiar to the experience of using a short hook, which is the first hook I reach for most of the time when I uh, am picking a lock. And finally, for profile number five, we have a hook that has a, what looks like a sharper curvature than the medium hook, and it has a rounded tip. I believe this is what a lot of people in the lock sport community would call a deep hook, which is um, definitely new to covert instruments. I think this is the first deep hook that Covert Instruments have ever made, so good on them for that. Overall, this just feels like a really well-rounded set, and I'm gonna look at these turners as well. The claims on the listing are that these pry bars are supposed to be a lot grippier than the previous ones that you would find in the Genesis or Echelon set, as well as the three-in-one turners on the Slim Pickings and Slim Tickler for top of the keyway tension. We're gonna put those claims to the test today. These adaptive two-in-one turners are also quite interesting. If we look at the original two-in-one turners from the Genesis set, the longer portion on this turner is intended for bottom of the keyway tension. You insert it into the bottom of the keyway and, you know, tension off that. And on the adaptive turners from the Reaper set, not only is this portion for bottom of the keyway tension longer than on the turner from the Genesis set, but it's also thinner, which I really like. I like this narrower profile on the bottom of keyway part on the Reaper 2-in-1 turners because that means there's a little bit more room above the pick as it sits on the turner and uses it as a shelf. There are some keyways where because they are kind of paracentric, Picking with top of the keyway tension is actually super annoying. Case in point, the SC1 keyway. I always try to use bottom of the keyway tension whenever I can because it creates a platform for my hooks to sit on and it stops me from having to kind of twist my hook around the warding and do all sorts of weird stuff to get to the pins and lift them. And if I try to stick a thicker medium hook like this 25 thou one from the Genesis into this keyway, it's just gonna be constantly grinding against the warding and it makes feedback really hard to interpret. I hate paracentric keyways, if you couldn't already tell. But looking at this adaptive two-in-one, if I insert the 40 thou one into the bottom, it does sit there pretty solidly. And I think if I reposition it in just the right way, it not only stops it from binding the core, but it also gives a little more room for my pick to move around. I think in this particular keyway, the 50 thou two-in-one is actually ideal. If I just insert it at the right angle and get it fitting in, it takes a little bit of fiddling, but yeah, there's definitely a lot more room in that keyway with this thinner bottom of keyway tension tool than with the normal ones with this wider bit from the Genesis set. And then of course these adaptive two-in-one turners also have a shorter end, which is used for top of keyway tension. Anyone who's picked at least a few locks with these particular tools should know how that works out. So that is a quick overview of the turning tools that come in the Reaper set and... Why do I feel like I'm forgetting something? Oh, that's right. I completely glossed over profile number two. This is the profile that McNally is calling the McTickler. It is this uh, sort of shallow looking hook, kind of like the Echelon Gentle Reach with this extra peak behind it. And what this is intended for is speed picking techniques like zipping and raking, but it also is supposed to be perfectly functional for single pin picking. There's been a lot of discourse in the Locksport community about this particular profile. The other four hooks that come in the Reaper set are Honestly, pretty standard. Again, McNally had the biggest hand in designing this set, but 
these profiles are probably familiar. He is probably well aware of what works and just decided to incorporate that into the set with uh, his own little bit of flair in these trapezoid handles, which are not the same as the round ones, as well as this little dip uh, right at the back of the pick shaft. In my experience, trying this out with a rib pick, this dip really makes no difference in terms of durability or ergonomics. I think it just looks cool. But there's been a lot of debate around the McTickler profile and is it really all that? Or is it just good for, you know, doing the mall ninja nally stab trick? That's what I aim to find out today. So I'm gonna see how far and how fast we can get picking locks through the LPU belt rank system using only this McTickler profile going from white to purple, which is the highest skill of lock that I have been able to pick. I have an asset twin exclusive that I will be talking about in another video, but um, yeah, that thing is an absolute beast. The keyway is extremely obnoxious. I'm going to have a hard time with that one. I'll need to do a lot of practicing and learning, whatever. So these are locks from white to purple on the LPU belt ranking system all with gradually increasing degrees of pick resistance from this acrylic padlock from one of my FNG sets, which uh, you could probably look at it and it would pop open, to this Medico M3, which I don't have a lot of confidence I'll be able to get open, uh, at least not on this video, but we'll see what happens. I think it'll be a fun time regardless. So uh, let's get started. I'm gonna begin with the acrylic padlock. I'm just gonna set these turners here and set the rest of the picks aside. I do need to find locks that I can use this shallow hook and this deep hook on at some point because I've never actually played with these two profiles before, but I've seen the short hook and medium hook and worked with them a billion times, so I don't feel the need to go over them. Maybe in another recording or another video entirely, I will focus on these two. Anyway, the showdown is now locks versus the McTickler. This is the 40 thou two in one turner. And we're gonna start with this clear acrylic padlock. Easy enough. The quint rake is a little more effective for this, I sometimes find, but I wonder if I can use the McTickler to nally stab this open. There we go. McNally always makes it look quite easy. All right, next on the list, we've got a master lock 141. I don't know why, but I always find these things quite difficult to zip or rake open, so I don't expect to be able to speed through this one. Oh, okay, I just had to stick the tool in and jiggle it around until something happens. I might need to do some more experimenting with this one. All right, next up we have a Master 570 for orange belts. I think this is an orange belt lock. I need to check before I embarrass myself. Yes, the Master 570 is indeed an orange belt lock. It is made of aluminum, except for the parts that aren't, and it is dead inside. I think that was faster than the time I set last week. Let me try that again, hold on. Got our turning tool in there. I'm gonna have to look at that in post. All right, so for green belt, we have got this American Lock 1100. I am actually not entirely sure of how I'm gonna tackle this one. Cause this is the point where zipping and raking start to not work quite as well. Let's give this 40 thou turner a shot in the bottom of the keyway like that. Nope, that just kind of rotates out. Maybe the 50 thou? Okay, I just have to make sure this isn't binding the core or anything. You can feel it in the turner. I think I'm binding the core here. Okay, I think we're gonna need to use top of the keyway tension for this one. Fortunately, 
We have got the new pry bars that come in this set. Let's insert this end into the top of the keyway. Okay, yeah, that is, uh, I bet even if I hold the lock kind of awkwardly like this, that is not coming out. And with top of the keyway tension, that extra peak behind the tip of the McTickler hook makes no difference whatsoever. So people who say this doesn't work for single pin picking are just hating, probably. Ooh, that was a good flavor click out of five. Nothing on four. Hmm. I don't know if two is asking questions. Okay. False set after setting one. Nothing on two, nothing on three. I think four. Okay, we got some counter rotation out of four. I think that's set now. Five won't go. One, oh, I just dropped the turner out. American 1101. McNally hatchet looking Turner zero. To be fair, there is very little that can stand up to the damn sprung actuators in these things. There are a lot of things I hate when it comes to picking locks. I hate paracentric keyways. I hate sprung actuators. Okay, we got three set, and we got this open. Okay, cool. So thankfully I didn't lose any progress when this turner fell out. I don't know what caused it to drop out there. Maybe if I tried the thinner end. Yeah, that probably would have been the move. Okay, so yeah, these two ends of the top of keyway turners are actually a little different. I probably should have paid that more mind as I was picking this thing, but I think this end would have been a little better suited for that uh, American Lock 1100. All right, well, there's that out of the way. Um, next, we have got a Packlock 90A Pro for Blue Belt. I've picked this thing a billion times, so I know what works. I just take the top of the keyway turner, stick it in an angle like that. Ironically, 20 thou picks are actually less useful in this particular keyway, I find, because it's so wide open. It's important to have just the right amount of wiggle room. I hear pins dropping. There was a counter rotation and a click on three. That's one. Oh no, is, is this one? I have trouble telling sometimes with the turner in the weird position. Okay, that's two. Okay. I might have overset three. We'll come back to that. A couple clicks on four and now it won't go. Click on five, that was a nice feeling one. Click out a six. Let's give seven a check. Click out of seven. Okay, click out of six again. Some of these pins are saying some weird stuff. That was four. I knew I had, I knew four had a little more in it. See about two. I know two is a high cut on this particular lock. Okay, there's one. I think one is good now. We are in a pretty deep false set. Three. Four. 
four seems to have dropped. Are we, are we getting counter rotate? Oh, nope. There goes four. Nothing on three, nothing on four, nothing on five. There's a click out of six. Seven is saying nothing. Did I screw something up? Honestly, the Echelon Gentle Reach usually slays this lock. There's another click. That's a let up on tension for that one. There we go. Ha! I knew I could do it. That is a Packlock 90A Pro picked open with a 40 thou top of keyway turner and the McTickler from the Reaper set. Okay, now for the final boss of this whole endeavor. This is a Medico M3 right here. Let's get all these picked corpses out of the way. I'm gonna tilt this back so that you guys can get at least a little bit of an inkling of what the keyway looks like. I think this is the first time I've shown this lock on this channel. So the way this lock works is, in addition to the pins needing to be lifted to the right height, they actually also need to be rotated in the correct direction to allow a sidebar that locks the core in place to retract. And additionally, there's an interactive element in the bottom of the keyway, which is really a trivial difference to the overall picking experience on this lock, but it does give a very clear sign of whether this lock has actually been picked. So I will be relying on that quite a bit. Tensioning the keyway on this Medico M3 is really weird. You would think that I would have a lot of fun with this lock because the keyway is so wide open. It's basically a big rectangle. And to be fair, I do enjoy picking this lock and I wanna buy some more of them, but it's really difficult for a turning tool to fit inside this thing. This is the 50 thou adaptive two in one. I try to stick it in the top of the keyway. Oh, it actually does work. Okay, well, if I take the uh, 50 thou two in one turner from the Genesis set, I try to stick the short end for top of the keyway tension of this little turner in the top of the keyway, and it kind of just, because this keyway is so wide open, it is a little difficult to get a grip in it with a top of keyway turner, but I wonder if the wider end of this 50 thou pry bar, ooh, okay, that is quite solid. All right, these turners might actually be onto something. I'm gonna use this 50 thou pry bar in the top of the keyway like so. Yeah, because the short end doesn't do it. I'm gonna use the wide end. I'm gonna start by zipping the pins a few times just to reset them. No nally stabbing or speed picking here. We're just gonna get started with some good, clean fun. So nothing on one, nothing on two. Three, we're getting some resistance on three. Click with some movement on three. Let's see. This is four. Four, click with some movement. Nothing on five. Let's try rotating five like that. Nothing on one. Two, we're gonna lift on the right. Two, I don't think, I don't think two is falling back down, okay. Oh no, there's two, okay, two has come back to us. Give one a good lifting there. I think we've got one rotated into position. Three. three is feeling a little questionable. Oh, no, I just poked three a little bit and we got some more movement. Four. Five is giving us that nice old rattle. Three, I think is good, two is good. Let's check the interactive elements. There we go, oh, wow, okay. Uh, 
The McTickler. Newsflash, everyone. The McTickler and this 50 thou pry bar have granted me the fastest opening of a Medico M3 I have ever attained. You know what? I'm going to grab my pinning tray and gut this thing just to prove to y'all that I was not playing around with that. I swear I did not take the teeth out of that sidebar and I did not put different pins other than what came in the factory. All right, we got our two pinning trays out. Um, I need to grab my screwdriver and take this cam on the back of the lock off. I believe the sidebar is on the right, so I think this is the right orientation to be uh, pushing the plug out with a follower. Apologies for the sudden change in pacing as well, because um, in order to verify that this lock has been properly gutted and I haven't messed with anything, there needs to be no cuts for this part. Okay, let's push this through. Yep, the sidebar is indeed on the right. We got that coming out. Okay. So, let's get the... How do we drop the... Oh, there's... Right, I forgot last time. Last time I gutted this thing. Uh, get the sidebar out. The interactive elements is going to need to come out as well. So the sidebar, the sidebar has its springs in there, right? I can't tell. Um, I would need to really lean in to figure that one out. Okay, there's that interactive element coming out, along with its spring. Uh, let me grab my pinning tweezers and just move that there. All right, it's time to get those key pins out. Here is number five. Here's number four. Number three. And there's number two and number one. I will get those chisel tips into focus in a second. Next, we are going to bring the follower out, see what we got inside. In terms of driver pins, I think these are all standard. Got our standard driver in number one. I think this lock has balanced pin stacks too, right? Okay, standard in number two. And we got a, uh, I felt something a little weird in number three. Yep. Oh gosh, okay. Well, that pin just uh, kind of flew around inside the core, but we've got a mushroom in number three. Um, I'm just gonna dump that out. We got a standard in number four. And finally, oh god, a standard in number five, and that last standard is very short. So yes, the uh, the pin stacks in this lock are indeed balanced, which makes sense because this is a lock that is meant to be used in a commercial fixture. And if I bring this pinning tray up, And if I can get my webcam to focus, there we can see the sidebar has those five teeth in it to verify that it has not been disabled. Um, these key pins are looking real, these key pins are looking snazzy as well. Um, number four is actually a spooled key pin, which is really interesting. It's hard to see from the distance that I'm looking up at my monitor. I have to look at all this at a weird angle so it comes through on camera. 
But there we go. We've got our standard driver on one, standard driver on two, mushroom on three, standard on four, and standard on five. And then if we take a look at this key pin from the top as well, just to make it a little bit clearer. Here we go. Okay, I don't know how visible that is on the webcam, but there are indeed gates on one side of the key pin and there's a little fin to limit the rotation on the other. And unfortunately, I cannot use a key to verify the integrity of this lock because it was not sold to me with one. All right, I'm gonna put this lock back together and then wrap up my thoughts on the Reaper set, more specifically the McTickler profile because um, I definitely have some things to say about this one. I know this thing has grub screws on the top that are supposed to facilitate this, but I cannot be bothered at this stage. Uh oh, we have an emergency here. I seem to have forgotten which key pins go in which position. I think that's how it was done. Fuck, God damn it! You have no idea how sore my thumb is because of me trying to friggin' what is this? Why are you not working? There we go, finally. All right, now I just gotta friggin' hurt my hands trying to keep the sidebar in. I probably should have just used the grub screws on the top of this thing. It would've made life a whole lot easier, wouldn't it? Oh, I needed to push the interactive friggin'. Did I drop a driver pin? Do not tell me I dropped a driver pin. Thank you. Thank you for not telling me I dropped a driver pin. Oh, this was supposed to be just a quick in and out of this Medico. Why will this sidebar not? These sidebar springs are like Dart Zone Max Striker 2.0 springs, I swear to God. Okay, is the, intera is the interactive element gonna stay put? I don't know why, but this is even harder to reassemble than the last time I did this off camera. No, I'm not letting a key pin fall out. All right, I'm gonna do this the other way. The way that's easier, cause my fingers can barely take any more of this. Okay, I need an Allen key that can get this thing. Nope, it needs to be one size down. All right, the grub screws are out. We got the sidebar and the interactive element in the core. Just, just, just get them in there. I don't, I don't care anymore. There we go. Okay, the core is now locked in. I hope these two screws are not different. I think they are different. What the hell? This screw will not sit flush with the back of the cam, and I think this screw is a little bit recessed in. That's better. All right, I'm gonna look at these key pins again to make sure that they're exactly right and they correspond with the right drivers. And now we just put all these springs back in, get the grub screws back on top, and hopefully I did everything right, but I won't be finding out until I try to pick this lock again. Remind me next time I gut this lock to just undo the grub screws at the top and take the pins out that way. All right, let's get our pinning tools away. I hope I don't need them again for the near foreseeable future. Okay, so I've established that I've reassembled the lock properly. So, the Reaper set from Covered Instruments. What have we learned? We have learned that the McTickler is still a very capable profile for single pin picking. I picked a Medico M3 with this thing, and a Packlock 90A Pro, and an American Lock 1100. This little peak behind the tip of the hook did not get in my way whatsoever. I think as long as you use top of the keyway tension and you give plenty of room for the hook to move around. This also just serves as a very solid uh, sort of shallow type hook, kind of similar to the uh, gentle reach from the Echelon. So after watching this demonstration, you're probably looking at this set and thinking, wow, that's really cool. You can clearly do a lot with it. Even though Snake only showed this one profile out of the five, I want that. Well, let's talk price real quick. The Reaper set is $55. So here I have the FNG set. This is my Genesis set. This is my Echelon set. And this is my Arbiter Bypass Kit. I'm going to order these with the least expensive on the left and the most expensive on the right. And this is what we get. We have the FNG at the lowest at around uh, $9.50. At $28 last I checked, we have the Genesis set. The Reaper set comes in at $55. Then the Echelon set, comes in at $70. And finally, the Arbiter Bypass Kit comes in at $74. Now there's an important caveat when it comes to whether or not you want to purchase the Reaper set. If you are an intermediate to advanced picker who can handle 20 thou tools without bending or breaking them, because these tools do come in 20 thou, and that makes them thinner and therefore a little bit easier to bend than the 25 thou tools that you would find in the Genesis set, 
the FNG set or the Echelon set. The Echelon set does come with some 20 thou profiles as well, but the Gentle Reach and the Double Peak Rake in this thing are still 25 thou. But if you think you have the sort of self-restraint that it takes to handle 20 thou tools, then the Reaper set is definitely a worthy investment. The thing that a lot of locks boarders didn't really like about the Echelon set is that even though it came with the pry bars and the ergo turners, as well as 20 thou versions of all the Genesis profiles, it was sort of an all round lock picking set because you know, it has tubular picking tools, a dimple rake, which I mean, dimple rakes only work on those cheaply made dimple locks. It has these two tools, which the gentle reach is actually quite useful. Um, like I said, this thing absolutely slays my Packlock 98 Pro, but it comes with this double peak rake, which is a rake. And then it also comes with two other rakes, which are rakes. So that was a bit of a letdown for some lock sporters when it came out, even those who are big fans of covert instruments. And of course the Arbiter set is entirely bypass tools. So unless you really want to get a more intimate knowledge of bypassing, you can totally skip out on this one without missing out on anything. I like bypassing because even though it's not really a demonstration of skill, it definitely gives a lot to this sort of knowledge and security awareness aspect. My gym locker lock is an American lock 1100 and I put a security wafer on that but there are still ways to break through that because it's just this thin piece of metal. And I'm not gonna use this Packlock 98 Pro because I use it to practice picking, but I wanna buy another one of these to use as my gym locker lock eventually because it is immune to the driver bypass attack. Anyway, that's a little bit of a tangent about bypassing in lock sports. So we're just gonna set this Arbiter set aside and we don't need the Echelon set either. So if you're just getting started picking locks and you don't know what you're getting into with Covert Instruments tools, I recommend starting out with the FNG set. It gives you this clear acrylic padlock, which you can use to really visualize how the internal mechanisms of a lock work, as well as a quint rake, a short hook, and a 40 thou two-in-one turner. And this clear acrylic lock, because of the way it's built, is good for some party tricks, like learning how to do the Nally stab. I'll be doing a more in-depth video on the Nally stab at some point. And with just this short hook and this turning tool alone, I've picked my way all the way up to purple belts. So you can go a long way with the FNG set if you really want to. The Genesis set is a step up. It comes with three of these two-in-one turners, a short hook, a medium hook, a quad rake, and a quint rake. The rakes, I mean, if you're into knowing how to exploit vulnerabilities in locks for security awareness purposes, sure, do what you want with the rakes. The most important part are definitely the hooks though. And Covert Instruments also sells to not just a hobbyist, but also a professional market. So for people in fields like military and law enforcement, these rakes might be important for rapid and silent entry into places where their targets might be lurking. But I am not a law enforcement officer or a member of the military. So really what these rakes do is they allow me to pull some fun party tricks and that's about it. But basically my point at the end of the day is if you're into lock sport for the hobby aspect and leveling up your picking skills and you're not worried about any of the sort of security awareness that comes with it, then the Reaper set is the true upgrade to the Genesis set, not the Echelon. The Echelon does come with really nice tools and the quality I've come to expect from Covert Instruments at this point is like more than enough to carry me through wherever my lock sport journey may go. But the Echelon set comes with four rakes. If you count the dimple rake, it comes with these tubular picks, which you'll only use to pick tubular locks like five times before you get bored of it because Tubular locks are dog shit, and you'll probably get the most use out of the turners, the two 20 thou hooks, and the gentle reach, and the rest of this will just sit to collect dust. But if you're into skilled single pin picking of different locks, and you need some 20 thou tools because those keyways are just getting too tight for your Genesis tools to navigate, they really knocked it out of the park with a Reaper set. It's a little expensive, but if money is not an issue and you're a big fan of Covert Instruments tools, I can definitely recommend this set and I will be doing some more stuff in depth with it in the future. I'll be exploring the deep hook and the shallow hook. I wonder if maybe I could use the shallow hook to get under the pins in this Acid Twin exclusive. I'll have to think about that one. I mean, this video was mostly just a showcase of the McTickler profile to try and 
shut down all the haters. But again, the other four hooks in this set are tried and tested designs. These tensioners are quite good, and I would say they 100% live up to the hype. Lady Locks and Georgia Jim were right about these things. And uh, yeah, I don't know what more you want me to say to sell you the Reaper set. McNally really knows his shit when it comes to picking locks, even though most of his videos on YouTube and TikTok are just him stabbing locks open in two seconds. And I think the way he designed this Reaper set and just my preliminary testing of it is a testament to some of the skills that he may not actually show on camera most of the time. So those are my final thoughts on the Reaper set by McNally. I like it. If you have $55 to spare, get it. If you like collecting covert instruments tools like I do, this is definitely a worthy addition to that collection. Look, people in the Locksport community see me spending money on these things and think I'm rich. I'm not rich. I'm irresponsible. But yeah, that'll be about it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. I will talk to you all later.